Following the security alert by the United States Embassy in Nigeria to U.S. citizens in Abuja on planned terrorist attack, the Department of State Services has called on citizens to be at alert and remain calm. The U.S. Embassy had issued a security alert to Americans on Sunday, noting that there was impending terrorist attack on public places in Abuja. However, reacting to the development on Sunday, the DSS, through its spokesperson, <coughs> Dr. Peter Afunaya, said that the alert was similar to that which has been issued by the service recently. The Nigeria police also said that the force will review the United States Security Advisory Alert in order to strengthen the existing structure for proactiveness in the FCT. We have uh, in the studio, uh, we have joined us virtually anyways, uh, retired director of DSS, Mr. Mike Ejiofo, uh, who joins us via Zoom, and also retired assistant inspector general of police, Mr. Wilson in Alegu, uh, in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Yeah, the pleasure is mine. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Mike Jofo, if you are there and if you can hear me, I would like to start with you. Um, well, the DSS has said that there have been several of these uh, alerts issued by the DSS. We know that we have, you know, constantly received uh, these alerts uh, from the DSS even before now. But it appears that we are seeing more responses uh, this time around with, with this uh, alert. What, why is it different? Is, is there anything different about the alert that the U.S. is issuing now? Okay, it, it does look like we do not have audio. All right, uh, we'll connect back to Mr. Mike Jaffo, but let's get back to the studio uh, here we have, where we have uh, uh, our guest in the studio. Again, let me throw the same question to you. Uh, we've, received, we've been receiving these alerts before now. This is not the first of its kind. But our responses this time around looks different. Uh, is there mm. anything different about the U.S. alert? Well, I... Once you have a lot, whether from the U.S. Embassy or U.K. High Commission or the DSS or the police, uh, like the police rightly said, whether actionable or not, you must take action. Because this, why I'm uh, saying this yes. is because, you know, mm. from the story that we carried this morning leading on the Trust, Daily Trust newspaper, it says uh, we are seeing tight security at government offices in satellite towns. Uh, FCTA is ordering CCTV in public places. Uh, police is launching counterterrorism exercise and all that. Mm. So it looks like something is happening. No, you see, there are many indices I used in arriving at some of these uh, advisory or security alerts as issued by the U.S. Embassy. And uh, you don't know the perimeter. So many things are taken into account. Even that, those done by the national security agencies, the NPF, uh, DIA, DSS, NI, and all of them. But, uh, and I think there are levels that uh, the, a kind of uh, cooperation it is possible this has been issued to them privately before it was made public. And it depends on the contents that were uh, shared and the level of uh, they were they devoid. So once you have this, I think it is right to say that. Uh, what do you want? You have to maintain situational awareness. Be mindful. That's all about it. Be mindful of your surroundings and what do you do about it. So we will not say that, why is this different? It depends. Let me, t t uh, once you meet uh, in, uh, in analyzing security issues, they look at various parts of the country and what they have on specific issues, which you and I may not know. And so it is incumbent on the national security uh, agencies to react appropriately right, as Mr. being Nalego. done. Yes. Mr. Nalego, uh, when the U.S. issued the statement, the DSS confirmed the uh, threat and mm. said that 
it was similar to what they had said in the past. Yes. Between April and now, we have had 171 reported cases of kidnappings in the suburbs around the FCT, mm -hmm. with about 58 deaths. So the question is, that is between April and now. We didn't see all of this. We didn't see all of these deployments and all of that till now that the U.S. issued this statement. Well, even, I, if the, even when the DSS said we were aware, we also talked about it. I, 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 you are aware that some military officers were killed around the barrier axis, I think two of them or so. And then there are ongoing patrols. It is just that it has been highlighted. A lot of activities take place that you and I may not know. So it is, and it is important that once in a while, once you receive this kind of alert, and especially when it attempts to confirm your own report, like the EDSS issued. And so once you have a security advisory that attempts to give some uh, potency so the one you have issued, you will not see it. And then the Nigeria police force, through the SIB and their own decisions. You know, all these things you develop from the arrests that you make, from the interrogation you conduct. You tend to have, uh, it's like a blind man holding an elephant, and somebody holds it in the leg, he thinks it's a wood, somebody holds it, talks it, says. So the, the, the idea is, once you have all this uh, DSS bringing DIA, military intelligence, and the, the, the foreign missions come to think about it. And the way they operate, that I understand is, they also have their sources, even within our communities. And what do they do? They, they try to see what is the pattern. What arrests are the security agencies making? All right. What are the open sources? So when they come about it, You've got to create that situational awareness by way of galvanizing, mobilizing the public. Right now, everybody is very conscious. Okay. That's why I talk about situational awareness. All right. All right, so let's get back to Mike Ejo for uh, over there. And you may also speak to this issue. But added to that, let me just say that uh, with regards to the uh, arrest of Boko Haram kingpins in Abuja and Kano, uh, that we are seeing as led as uh, as the lead story uh, this morning on the Daily Trust uh, newspaper. Should we be alarmed? Well, for me, there's no cause for alarm. Uh, just like uh, good to be back together with uh, Mr. Naligu, um, I can tell you that there's no cause for alarm. Like the advisory by the United States uh, and UK, prices were made for their citizens to be at a lot. Not necessarily just for the information of Nigeria, but uh, in their citizens, their nationals. So to be careful where they visit. Uh, if you recall, in the action of the State Security Center, they also confirmed that they have received this information and issued such advice prior to this time. Now, the question, intelligence uh, operation, there must be cooperation with various agencies. You know, the report may have emanated to the, uh, to the embassy. They also have their own sources, you know, in looking at the but, you know, they're always interested in protecting their nationals. That's why the statements were issued, not necessarily to Nigerians. The most you see that I that even before this advisory, if you notice in Abuja, for instance, I've seen intensified and increased police patrol and checkpoints in the past uh, one week. Not necessarily because of that terms too that uh, the most have been exchange of intelligence between the police and the state security service. So the arrest, like you said, arrests have been made, and that is uh, in, in continuation of the joint efforts of the security, uh, of, uh, the security agencies. They are not in, uh, excluded, you know. Uh, that uh, too, that uh, our security agencies are working. But I will most also take this uh, issue of the advisory of the United States more seriously. 
is that uh, you know we people rising in political activities, normal things that we should. Have. So it's not unusual that uh, such uh, uh, statements are made. But if you had come from the, the security service police, you know it will raise a lot of alarm. And you can see the way the matter is being circulated. It's gone viral. It's gone everywhere. You know, uh, creating panic. And perhaps that is why the state, uh, the security agents, their own part, you know, this caution. Unless when it is absolutely necessary, then the services can alert the people. Uh, but I can assure you that there's no cause for alarm. But our citizens, like the most community, must be vigilant and volunteer information to the security agency. Like it's always said. You say, 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 say something, say something, must all be vigilant at this point in time. Mr. Jofo, with the offensives that were going on in the Northwest and Northeast, security experts actually raised concerns about the fact that these people could move from that area to other parts, including the FCT. And as early as February, March, several newspapers, including the Daily Trust, reported that uh, insurgents had set up cells in some of this community surrounding the FCT. So in your view, do you think that action should have been taken a lot earlier? Well, uh, with the last question, uh, I didn't quite get it. But uh, if I'm, I follow the earlier trend, you know, first, that when the heat was turned on the uh, terrorists in the northeast, they moved to the south, uh, uh, to the northwest. Now, the heat has been turned on after the heat of uh, the train uh, uh, kidnap, you know, and uh, the victims were uh, finally released. And I've also been uh, advocating that the efforts be deployed. Exactly what they have been doing now, the efforts have been on the offensive, bombing their hideouts and uh, killing a lot of them. And the, the tendency for them to relocate and come to a bit is a trend. So there's no, it's not impossible. They are also trying to Abuja. But I can tell you that it's going to be very difficult for them to operate with you. So, so, the, so the issue now hmm. is, the issue now is with all these operations going on, you know, around the FCT and, and in the Northwest, like you met that, like you noted, uh, didn't we see this coming? Shouldn't we have made deployments earlier than what we have right now? I, I said so. I said even before advisory, if you notice in the past, especially within Abuja and Iberia, they have been increased police, especially at night. You know, my, uh, my office is in my camera and uh, I close late. And the police checkpoint, looking at vehicles, big questions, so they, uh, it's not been uh, seen before. These are issues that I said that the police officers cannot just come out openly to begin to raise alarm, you know, cause panic among the populace. So they see things. The threat are taking the... Uh, yes. All right. So let me, let me uh, come back to the studio here, uh, Mr. Inalegu. Now... One, one issue that seemed to re be reoccurring for us is the issue of the consistency of our deployments. We seem so inconsistent with deployments. We always wait when there are alerts like this, then we deploy to the fields. And then when things seem to be a bit quiet, we just go back, you know, to, to our offices and relax and all that. So uh, that's an issue, right? Uh, because if you look at uh, the orders that we are seeing now, FCTA ordering CCTV <coughs> in public places and all that. And some people will say, well, I thought that this is something that we've dealt with long ago, you know, and all that. So it just shows, I mean, the police is launching counterterrorism uh, exercise now, mm -hmm. you know, when we are seeing mm -hmm. these security alerts and all that. These are things that are supposed to have been in place, you know, already, isn't it? Do we have to wait for things to happen? There is no time that the security people go on break. When you open a police station, you throw the key away. The police station is open. The patrols are there. And so, uh, either 
within the precincts of the FCG and within in, in the capital city itself. You've always had police uh, uh, patrols, military patrols within the outskirts, and the DSS doing their work. Those collecting intelligence, arrests have been made and cases have been prosecuted. But there are levels of security. You have the white, the state of relaxation, so to speak. And then you hasten it, uh, bring a little bit to yellow. Uh, relax, but alert. Then you bring it to orange. When you get to orange, which I think is the stage we are now, because we're not on red, you, 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 you are going to have deployment in that perspective. Because you've got to understand it like that. And so this is where we have got advisory. The DSS have also made their own, uh, uh, issued their own advisory previously. Now the, the, the U.S. embassy coming and giving, like uh, uh, Mr. Ejiofo stated, giving very wide circulation. You won't believe it. I got messages from the United States, from USA, about the same thing, forwarding them to me and more all this. So what you have, because there are grades of security at that level, and I think the stage where is orange, but I wouldn't say it's uh, red. It's orange then, next to red. Yes. So we're next to red. Yes. Okay. So once you, uh, that's because there is a lot, uh, a lot that the police is conducting uh, the uh, Operation Dark in Kagawa, you know, doing a lot. Just, it, 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 you do it all the time. Even when there are no advisories, you are, you are going to be doing different as simulation exercises because you've got to put your force in state of readiness you've got to create this consciousness so the police every day okay so give us, patrols, give, us, give us a sense of the different levels of alerts and the kinds of deployments that is required for each level yeah. that the, we are talking okay about. there are the, generally the police will always maintain patrols you always have flashpoints or hotspots you, you have presence and you have patrols on the highway because crime can never end. People are always committing a crime. Now, when you get to the stage of, let's say, yellow before orange, uh, you, you, are, you relax, what you are alert, and what do you do at that stage? You, you, you begin to also create consciousness that you do. You keep telling people situational awareness, be, a, be mindful of what happens around your surroundings. When you see something, say something, and you go to that level. Now, I think the level that we have, because the, they even do issue to the staff of the US Embassy, uh, is being com public consumption, consumption. And we don't know what they saw, what they had before this thing came about. So, what I, so when you get to this stage, you've got to up the game. You are not, everybody, people, some, some uh, private schools would have said, the schools in FCT, they have no orders to close. They are all running. But then you've got to have a level that, what do you have? You have one level that you talk about, uh, uh, what, uh, what, what, what do you want to say now? You create a lot that in case something happens, what kind of response? So you are, the deployment is going to be different. You are going to, Reorganize in such a way that you respond robustly, even quicker than usual, because everybody is on a lot. There is nothing like it will take you five minutes. In that case, a state of alertness, which is normally maintained, but there is heightened supervision. There are exercises, there are uh, locations that you normally storm to check where you have previously had some of these cases, because you don't, you cannot uh, think, you, you want to think about sleeper cells. So is it the stage for them to be activated? So is it, do, do, so, we, do we need to be seeing redeployments of personnel, for instance, and then maybe, you know, increase the number in certain locations and all yeah, that? Yeah, there, there, there are like when the situation gets to this level, you, you've got to also draw officers from offices. Those who are not on... So that because it's no longer a routine, you need to cover more places. You are, you are, if you were covering like here from here to, uh, from let's say Gudu, from Gudu to Banex, up to Guarimpa, on that straight uh, Amadu Velo way, maybe you increase more at the, at the junctions. But the most important thing is 
creating awareness among the people, dealing sp speedily with any information that comes to you, and okay. then synergy. All right. You so have to increase the level of your interagency cooperation and collaboration. This okay. needs to help. Right you. now we see in a lot of filling stations with very long queues. You yeah. know, a lot of people right now. Filling stations are a major attraction. Uh, even maybe more than the markets, <laughs> you know, yeah, and all that. Know. So, um, how do we ensure safety of people in filling stations? I, I, I think the issue of uh, fuel queues, you know, vehicles on the queue, I think the filling station people have got to devise means. I don't think it will be too expensive for them at a time like this, for the Federal Capital Territory Administration, to think of having like a little tax. It may not be expensive. You cut, you know, ha uh, cardboard paper and you write, you know, from one to the end, up to a hundred. It means if you don't have that uh, card, you just distribute it. Anybody crowding around the gate, the, 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 the exit gate, all this, so that you are able to identify. For security, we must do everything that we can if we don't do that. So right. being, being crowded at filling stations poses a great risk. But to mitigate this risk, we should have, there, there should be some deployment in those locations. But more importantly, the filling station people should devise means. If you have up to 100 vehicles on the queue, I think by the time you give them tax, one, two, three, you don't need to use expensive things. Just has some cardboard paper, you cut them, you write, and the manager signs, and you distribute to the end. Once you come, you collect the card. If you don't have the card, in that way, you are able to keep a check on the people who come. Because if somebody drives a vehicle laden with explosive, you know, that can happen. And before you, 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 oh. you, uh, uh, you come in, the schools should also have uh, early warning system in place in a way that should anything happen, they are able to contact the nearest security formation, be the police, the military. There should be that understanding. And then uh, this, so at a stage like this, the response has got to be rapid and the police actions and patrols has to be proactive, a lot of proactivity in terms of conducting race at some hot spots so that you are able to make a race, and then you can. If they had planned this in, then they are, and not only within the city center, you've got to think about the outlying areas, areas like Zubagiri, and then Nyanya, and some other places, area one, uh, and some of these places. Because if you don't have them in control, and then like uh, Mr. Ejofo said, I went around to a lot of police uh, patrols, and yeah, but observation we'll, we'll, so we'll, you we'll have come to that though, the yes. issue of the checkpoints. And okay. my question is to Mr. Ejofo. Yes, everybody is now talking about make arrest and uh, ensure that uh, when uh, do deployment so that if these attacks happen, uh, you can counter uh, the attacks and all of that. But we have reports saying that these insurgents have infiltrated the communities. They are living with the people. Some of them have taken up many jobs around these communities and that their duty there is to gather information for whoever, because these particular people are foot soldiers. What can be done in this uh, scenario? Well, before, before I go into, uh, there's a question you read, which to me, as is very scary. The, the queues at the petrol station. If you look at the advice given by the Now, the question is how do we avoid uh, forming and exposing people to read? I think the government, does, the petrol stations can do. Make petrol available. Now, initially, the reason given for the scarcity was because of the flood that has overtaken the road at uh, Kaffee uh, in uh, Kogi State. Now, that has receded. I fact traveled by road last week. And the situation on the road is horrible. 
over 50 kilometers between uh, the Jatu, a distance of over kilometers. The road is completely blocked by trailers and tankers protesting the horrible situation of the world. And the communities within that area have said they will not be able to move. can disappear is making the petrol available. Now, on the issue of um, the parcels, if you recall that the excess issue is that the parcels have been created within and outside the Abuja and Nairobi. How do we do it? The police cannot be anywhere, everywhere. The excess cannot be everywhere. It is not incumbent on this uh, communities till they ask to observe what is going on. If you look at uh, uh, some, like where in, in some Kuj Kuj areas in particular, you, you know, since after the the, the uh, jailbreak in uh, Kuj uh, facilities, how many of those who have been rearrested? Very few of them. And some of them have even confirmed rejoining the terrorist groups and the bandits. So we have a very serious issue in our hand that we cannot leave for government alone. We must see something, say something. All right. All right. So um be able to uh, get yourself together. Okay. The question yeah. I want to ask is regarding the checkpoints that we see uh, within the uh, within the city center. Uh, in most of these checkpoints, I mean, you see a lot of you know people queue up waiting to you know, pass through and all that. But in most cases, you don't see any serious check happening, really. Uh, at most, the, the, the officers just look at you in the face and, and then you just move. I mean, whatever it is you are carrying in your vehicle, nobody knows. How do they really check mm -hmm. and be sure that you are not carrying anything that, uh, you know, could cause harm and all that? You are not going to be able to arrest all criminals. You've got to have that understanding. And so, and there is a level of psychology. If vehicles are coming, you observe the passengers, you observe their, their reaction to a police point, you look them straight, and then you can ask. But you see some vehicles, once you see them, very uncomfortable, unusual friendliness, you have got to ask questions. And so, when you have all the vehicles coming, because once you stay on the road for a long time, you will know their spirit, because from the behavior, even when you travel out, outside the country, you drop your bags on the search, it's okay, you go, you stay. From the body language. So, somebody is, a, a woman is carrying her children to school, and you see them, clearly, you, you pass them. The other one is coming, two young men, with a young lady, fairly uncomfortable. You pull them over and you check. But in this check, in, in the check you conduct, there are things you look for. You look for stolen vehicles that have been reported. You look for perhaps people who have just robbed, they are returning to their base. Sometimes they are carrying things that are prohibited. They are carrying firearms. Mm. In all of this, there is, you've got to sharpen, the, the officers are taught to sharpen their observatory skills. Okay, but it I is mean, from this observatory but, but, but don't you think that there's need for some kind of uh, equipment that is going to enhance uh, these checks, because just merely relying on just the human no. eye to just no. see yeah. and you know just yeah. by your psychology yeah. see everything and all that. But let me throw well, that but, question but to you. There, there are other places you see some vehicles. Mm. Sorry, some vehicles that have the equipment to detect when they are explosive. I think those white vehicles they are not in every places. Mm. But you know, 
Security is quite, you know, expensive. All right, mm -hmm. Mr. Mike. Uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, because of human, the human nature, you see exhaustion on some of these officers. Uh, they look overwhelmed sometimes, and all of that. How do we make sure that these checkpoints are effective in what they are there to do? The, the so police observed that uh, in a vehicle that there was a smell of Indian hair, and uh, the police stopped only to say covered that they were actually Indian hair in the in the bag, and the the, the owner of the bag. Not only that, you cannot bring all equipment in to begin to, uh, like uh, scanners and all this, is, that capacity. We don't have the facility to do all this. It's a, it's a major problem. And uh, on our own, begin to find. I continue to say, when I say people begin to ask, the police, for instance, is not adequately equipped of funding, in terms of uh, training, in terms of capacity. And they will ask what of the money that has been budgeted, what did they do with it? Uh, it it's not only in security subsector, but the problem now is that, you know, with uh, security, everybody, because without security, we can All so right. you ask yourself why the police, for instance, goes to uh, outside the country for operations. And they are just the best. Who have the best of police officers? Because mm. it's the environment that determines who you are. The functionality. All right. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have to go. Uh, Mr. Mike Ejo, for uh, retired uh, uh, director of the DSS, thank you for joining us on Daybreak uh, this morning. And also, uh, retired assistant inspector general of police, uh, Mr. Wilson Inalegu, thank you for joining us on Daybreak this morning. Thank you.